Hi everybody, this is Tom Phelan again. We're doing one of our eight minute parenting tips. And today we're talking about dads are stepping up or are they? I'll give you uh, both sides of that controversy. So this one's kind of fast. It's about, you know, eight, eight 10 minutes. Uh, so make some suggestions for what you can do. I, there'd be more moms watching this probably than dads. So, but we'll have suggestions for everybody. So this is what we're going to talk about. And this is where we're going to start. Uh, in human beings, there's a thing called the fairness instinct, which means that we expect in any human group, we expect people to contribute equally uh, to the common good to the extent that they are able. So we don't expect much from the cat. We don't expect much from preschoolers. We do expect a lot from uh, our spouses or partners. And surprisingly, we don't expect a lot from older kids, but I'm going to try and change that notion uh, today. So there's a lot of work to be done. Generally, the fairness instinct is a battle between men and women that involve these uh, primary categories. Work outside the home, primary child care, which is where you're doing an activity where that's all you can do with a child. You can't be watching TV or doing anything else. Secondary child care is when you're home, but you're not doing something directly with the child. Uh, it's more like babysitting, I suppose. You could be watching TV or they could be in the other room, but you're there for emergency purposes and so on. And then there are household tasks. In the United States, we get traditional inequities between men and women. And these are particularly difficult when both um, uh, the uh, husband and the wife are working full time. So you can see here some of the inequities when both men and work, men and women are working full time. The men are working a, a few more hours uh, <clears throat> outside the home. But inside the home, women are working a lot more. Uh, primary child care with kids stands out like a sore thumb. Uh, it's a double what the men are doing. Secondary child care being home for emergency purposes, not so big a difference. Household activities, big difference. And here's a breakdown in the household activities. Women are still doing a lot more house cleaning, uh, food prep and cleanup laundry, and not so much uh, difference in shopping, a little bit of a difference. So we have here what we call violations of the equal suffering law or the fairness uh, instinct. The result of this is not funny. Uh, it's a lot of arguments between men and women about who's doing what, and <clears throat> moms often telling dads or partners, I never get any help around here. Help is a bad word, and what I'm going to try and explain today is if you're a mom, you don't want to ask for help. Uh, you want to ask for something better than that. But the ultimate result of the uh, violations of equal suffering law is 40% of marriages end in divorce. And it's even worse with second and third marriages. So a sad ending uh, when this conflict is rampant. Dads say there are positive changes. There are. Dads in general are, are more aware of the problem. Uh, there are more stay-at-home dads than there were before. You can see that there. Uh, since uh, during COVID, dads were spending more time uh, at home. That's changing back a little bit. Uh, in 2020, uh, men spent 60 more minutes per day on household jobs than they had before. And 50% of parents, men and women, say uh, that that's an important part of their identity. This is a funny statistic. Why isn't it 90%? I don't know, but that's a strange uh, number. Uh, on the other hand, the problems we have, dads are stepping up, but this is the but uh, page. Uh, the biggest problem is when both moms and dads are working full time. The differences in pre and post dad behavior uh, are not great. So dads are doing better, but not a whole lot better. Uh, research has shown consistently that we dads tend to embellish our own performance and report greater changes than we're actually doing and that the women and, and then the women report uh, for us. Uh, dads do more, but the biggest but probably is dads do more around the house, but when moms remind them, mom, this is not a, a, a complete responsibility transfer, it's a partial responsibility transfer. So this means more emotional labor for the moms. They still have to worry about the job getting done, then remind dad to do it, and then mom's going to check and see if it was done correct. So our goal is complete responsibility transfers. A complete responsibility transfer is where mom doesn't remind anybody what needs to be done. <clears throat> she doesn't criticize their performance while they're doing it, and the job is done afterwards, and mom doesn't provide any feedback other than uh, positive. So what we're looking for is complete responsibility transfers, not help. Okay. Research also has shown us what do moms want most for Mother's Day? Uh, the answer is free time. Okay, so we're going to try and find some free time for mom. But for you moms, you're going to have to change your attitude about certain things. <coughs> and for you dads, you're going to have to do uh, a different version of that. 
one of the things left out of these discussions a lot of the time is what about the kids? We don't ask kids to do anything around our house in terms of primary child care, household tasks, and so on. But neuropsychologists tell us that kids, as they get older, <clears throat> their executive functioning skills, their ability to carry out a plan and do a job, uh, get better and better. See, a six-year-old can carry out a plan. This is for a semi-boring task, not watching a video game. Six-year-old can do something for about 10 minutes, uh, seven-year-old, 20 minutes, up to a nine-year-old, 40 minutes, and it gets you know greater uh, after that. So that's their ability to carry out a plan. And we don't use this uh, information and we don't benefit from it because we're moms versus dads, moms versus dads. Let's get the kids involved. The types of dads we're talking about fall into three categories. <clears throat> Many of you moms have dads that are very cooperative. Just ask and you shall receive. <laughs> some of you have uh, dads or partners that are ambivalent. You may have to do a little persuasion. And some of you have partners who are traditionalist resistant types and they're harder to deal with, but they're not totally impossible to deal with. <clears throat> when we're going to talk about complete responsibility transfers, we're going to talk about this behavioral technology uh, list here. I know it's kind of long, but I'll, I'll uh, emphasize different parts of it in different ones of our examples. So you never want to do what you're going to do. Your mom, you never want to do what you're going to do in anger if you're going to make changes. One-on-one -on -one or family conferences uh, should be used to introduce and follow up. No spontaneous negative feedback unless it's an emergency. It's very important. No perfectionism and negative feedback. Involve the kids. I'll give you some examples of that. <clears throat> uh, train the kids to be more independent. That's part of the thing we're talking about. And you have to anticipate if you're a mom, you're going to be anxious and guilty. Uh, you're not going to be thrilled uh, with the changes that if your um, you know, husband and the kids are doing more, you are not going to be constantly thrilled. It may be some of the time, but you're going to be worried, irritated, and guilty about it often. So let's do one example uh, that has to do with household tasks. Okay, we're talking about how do we do complete responsibility transfers? Now we're going to look at laundry. Did you know a seven-year-old can do his own laundry? Yes, he can. And dad can do his own laundry. So what do you have to do? Just tell them they're going to do their own laundry. In this situation here, dad's going to train Noah, who's seven, to do his own laundry. <clears throat> and that's going to be the deal. Mom's not doing Noah's laundry or dad's laundry from this time on. <clears throat> what, what are we learning from our behavioral technology? Mom did this in a family meeting very calmly. She said, I'm not doing the laundry anymore. Uh, she involved the kids, training them for independence. Mom's going to feel guilty when they're doing their own laundry. She has to be quiet, keep quiet. Let's do another example. Primary child care. This is something, especially for you moms, <clears throat> getting kids up and out in the morning when they have executive functioning capabilities of 40 or 30 minutes or more is unnecessary. They can get themselves up and out if you <clears throat> know how to train them to do that. I've done this with dozens and dozens and dozens of families over the years. A lot of fun for me with kids nine and up. You buy them an alarm clock, you tell them that they have to get themselves up and out. You're not writing an excuse note. If they oversleep, they oversleep. They oversleep. They panic. They get mad at you. It takes about three or four days for them to get the idea. If you stick to your guns, <laughs> and I know this is not a, this is only a brief discussion of it, but it's possible. It works. You can do it. Uh, the kids will be independent, getting themselves up and out, proud of it. <clears throat> you have time to relax, free time in the morning, have a cup of coffee. Behavioral technology here is the biggest thing probably is dealing with your guilt about not waking the kids up or not writing them a note for school and their anger at you. Let's look at another example of unnecessary primary child care homework. Kids nine and up should be doing their own homework. Generally, it's about 40 minutes to an hour. They can do that without reminders from mom or dad. <clears throat> Let them face the consequences. Now, you probably can't do this with handicapped kids like ADHD or learning disabled, but you can do it with typically developing children. Here's another example that involves uh, secondary child care and household tasks. <clears throat> One of the household tasks is making dinner. Who makes dinner most of the time? Mom makes dinner most of the time. So look at, remember our chart here? Dad's secondary child care on average, the hours they're home and available uh, to watch after the kids and so on are almost 30 hours a week, uh, even when both are working full time. So what are you gonna do? For the Thursday evening meal, mom is going to go out with a friend for a workout and dinner. Mom and dad, Sarah and Max have two kids, five and three. Dad's home with the kids and he's gonna get dinner for the five and the three-year-old. 
Mom is not going to make dinner and leave it there. She's not going to leave dad a list. Mom comes home later and the kids proudly announce, Mommy, guess what daddy made us for dinner? We had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with black olives and chocolate milk. What should mom say? Think about it. <clears throat> no negative feedback. Mom should say, wow, that sounds good. And, and that you call that a meal. The kids love the things, there's things we often forget. Kids love learning new skills. Kids adore being independent. Okay? And we don't take advantage of these facts. Kids want to do what the big people are doing, like get themselves up and out, do their own homework. And they enjoy expressing their talents. Dads, a lot of dads like to cook. Uh, a lot of dads do their own laundry. I cook in our house and I do my own laundry. I've done it for however many years. Uh, and a lot of dads enjoy shopping for food. These are not always uh, painful things to do. And a lot of dads enjoy one-on-one -on -one time uh, with a wife or with a kid. That's primary child care some of the time. Everyone in the house wants a mom <clears throat> who is happy, including mom. Okay, but you, moms often forget. Uh, people don't want you miserable doing everybody's work for them. They want to see you happy. Uh, that's very important. So to review quickly, what's this? This is an example of unnecessary primary child care. You want to stop it. What needs to be done? Independence training based on our knowledge of kids' executive functioning capabilities. What's this? This is a nine-year-old girl making dinner for her mom. This is a complete responsibility transfer on this particular night. Okay, so... Hopefully you get some ideas here, what you can do. References here include both 123 Magic and the Manager Mom uh, epidemic. Good luck.